Hello everyone, I'm Generation 3DX. Uh, I'm a digital artist that specializes in making 3D content using Daz Studio. In this series I'm going to tell you how you can produce beautiful art using Daz by studying the key areas of characters, posing, props, cameras, lighting, clothing, hair, surfaces and rendering. There is a lot to unpack in the series here, but the beauty of Daz is that unlike more comprehensive 3D modeling applications such as Blender, you can get quick results straight out of the box, as we'll see by the end of this quick introductory video. Although I'll be covering many technical aspects of using Daz, this will not just be a how-to series. I will also be providing my own viewpoint on how to use this technical know-how in a way that can bring out the beauty and life in your virtual characters through my quarter century of experience in fine art, photography and design. So what is Daz Studio? Well its basic purpose is to pose one or more human models in simple or complex scenes to be rendered in 3D, primarily as stills but also animation and also to export characters to other media such as video games. Daz was founded as the Digital Art Zone back in 1999 as a content house for the 3D figure animation and modeling tool Poser, primarily around developing its highly detailed human figures Michael and Victoria for that application. But by 2005, Daz had launched its own application Daz Studio, which then ultimately overtook Poser in terms of popularity, owing in part to its free application download and paid content business model plus its ease of use of ready-made assets to enable a wide audience to quickly produce 3D character-based art. Today, Daz has probably the world's largest catalogue of figures, hair, clothing, accessories and props of any 3D modelling application through its main website catalogue. But other sites such as RenderHub and Renderosity also provide thousands of Daz assets. Ok, so that's enough on the background to Daz, let's get our hands dirty with a quick demo. I'm assuming by this point you'll have downloaded your free copy of Daz Studio from the website and installed it. When you first open the application, you'll be presented with a screen similar to this, in which you broadly have your catalogue of available content on the left, the viewport in the middle, and the scene and object controls on the right. Now this is a massive simplification of course, but it'll do for the moment. So let's load up a figure by selecting a Genesis 8 basic female from the catalogue and bring it up in the viewport. Now as this is a PG rated video, we'll quickly need to put some clothes on her by selecting some items from the wardrobe. In this particular case I'll select this pro skate outfit from the wardrobe, which you can select down here from the wardrobe icons, uh, the uh, wardrobe folder here double click on that and there we have so, so we've loaded in a, uh, a whole set of clothing here um, now I will go over what Genesis and the 8 means in terms of this figure in, in a future video but this character comes free with Daz but you'll see here other characters that I paid for that have their own shape skin and other assets pre-made for you and using one of these pre-built characters will ultimately be the path that most of you will go down. But for this demo, we'll stick with the free Genesis 8 female. Like with the Genesis 8 character, Daz provides a number of basic items of clothing, but the vast majority that you'll use will be paid assets. So with her now decent, and since most of you are not into the bold look, let's give her some hair also. We'll just get rid of this cap here, so it's not in the way. So we move over to the hair here and we'll just select some here and we'll pick this one this is one of my favorites a produce star so again hair assets are a big area of the Daz marker and good quality hair is often worth the higher price in order to transform your characters into beautiful and realistic depictions of people so now that we have the character in the viewport let's put her in the scene and to do this I'll go over to the content library and in the environments I'll pick out uh, let me see. We'll pick out uh, Yoga Studio, why not? In this case, we have a preloaded set. We can just load that in. And there we have our scene. 
So we now have a figure and we have a, a set. Okay, so that'll do in terms of uh, content at this time. So now let's have a look at the viewpoint where the action takes place. With the character selected, I can rotate around that, orbit around that character using the mouse or with keyboard shortcuts. I can also translate the view in the, in the XY plane or also zoom in and out on the, on the Z plane. I can also frame the character selected by this button here. Or I could reset the view entirely with this button here. So if you ever get lost, you can do always reset. Now with the translate tool, I can move the character in the scene if I need to move them into a, a position that I need, either by selecting that way, or I can actually go into the parameters tab and I can move them this way as well. Okay, so now here's where the magic really starts. We can actually, using the rotate tool, we can begin to rotate the various articulated bones of the figure. There are many different ways you can do this. You can see you can either you can select the actual bone in the uh, on the actual figure itself. Or for, for, for more finer control, you can use this control here. Or you can actually use the uh, particular, if you're after a particular bone that you want to, to change, then it can be done this way too. There's also the uh, power pose, which enables more complex and more, such as the head and neck and, and abdomen. Uh, and also in the fingers as well. We'll cover more, we'll cover more of this in, in the next video, uh, but this is a particularly powerful uh, way of actually m changing multiple things in a natural kind of way. Okay, so that's the basics of posing. Now let's have a look at the different view modes. Uh, by default, you'll always have the, uh, it'll be selected with texture view, texture shaded, but we have other ones we can also use occasionally. I don't use these particular ones that much. Uh, you have uh, these lit wireframe, smooth shaded, wire texture shaded. Sometimes these can be useful if you've got collisions and you're trying to work out, get the exact alignment on something. But the one I use most of all, uh, the two I use most of all, and, and I alternate between these with the top keys that I have are the texture shaded, which is the default one, and then the render preview. Okay, so at this point we want to talk about your video card. If you are using an AMD card, you'll find that your options are pretty limited for uh, what you can do in Dash Studio as you will not be able to use hardware acceleration uh, to do your uh, 3D rendering. And in which case you would have to use your CPU to do a software render of it, which can take many hours even for simpler scenes. If you do have an NVIDIA card, however, you, you're in luck because NVIDIA iRay engine is built into Dash and that allows full hardware acceleration of the card in order to render the scene. Now here we've got a preview, NVIDIA preview, and you can see, well, I have a relatively powerful card. I've got a, a NVIDIA RTX uh, 3090, uh, and you can see it's actually pretty quick in how it's able to actually give me a, uh, a render of that, of that scene uh, as a preview. All right, so on the right hand side, let me switch back to uh, the uh, texture shade there. We don't want to burn off, burn out the uh, GPU. On the right hand side, I quickly uh, touched on this earlier, but we've got the, the scene hierarchy. If we just collapse that, we see we've got our figure here, our Genesis 8 female here. We've got her hair. We've got the set. I just deselected that to prevent it from uh, doing all this selection thing. Uh, and we have a camera and uh, we'll go over cameras in a future video. It's beyond the scope of this particular introduction. So if I to open up the uh, the, the female uh, hierarchy, we can see here, we can, we can see all the different bones and we can select those. For instance, we can select um, the very last bone on her, uh, on her thumb, on her left thumb. And if you needed to particularly rotate that for whatever reason, then uh, this just is always good to get to know this because it get, it gives you uh, an understanding of how the skeleton's put together, essentially. 
We also have an auxiliary view. Let's move that up. So I can switch to a different camera here, for instance, and I can rotate that independently of my main view. These come in very useful uh, when you're needing to do camera focusing or when you need to do a left or right. Yes, so having different having a different uh, viewport is, can be very useful. So last of all, we've got the bottom right section where you'll be doing most of your detailed work. You have every parameter as I have the, uh, the, the female selected here. It's every single parameter that relates to the female will be covered is covered here. We'll go over all these uh, different sections at a later time. You have shaping, which we'll cover in a future video. Posing, which we touched on earlier. Here you have expressions. So you can actually uh, change the whole, uh, there's a composite set of posing uh, controls here, or you can actually do individual ones, such as closing the eyes. Uh, the, these things are not available within the main viewport. So in order to do uh, pose controls, you have to do those in this. You have got the power poser, which we touched on earlier. We have the surfaces tab, which uh, you'll be very interested to work on when you get into more advanced and refinement of characters and, and making changes to colors and so on surfaces and so forth. We have the lights. We don't have any lights on this scene for now. Lights is a whole subject on its own, a very important subject, which we'll cover in a future video. Cameras is another very important subject. Okay, so we have a basic scene here that we can render. But before we actually do this, uh, let's just try to tidy up a couple of things here because uh, I would uh, be embarrassed to release this onto uh, a catalog. So let's actually give her a decent pose. We can go to a, a pre-selected, uh, a pre-loaded pose, pose that I paid for in uh, uh, at some point on the DAS website. Let's pick some standing poses here. Let's just grab one of these. So now we can see what's happened there is it's we've got a whole pre-made pose. Maybe let me just move her out of the way so that she's in some light here. Okay, that'll do. Right, so let's just uh, just refine this pose slightly here because she looks a little bit odd. It's loaded in a pose which is for a diff slightly different character. Right, okay, this'll do on this one. Uh, it's a just an introductory video. Uh, we're gonna cover issues regarding lighting uh, and uh, texturing and, and expressions in another video. Right, so final render. We go to our render settings tab. We'll just do a uh, 1080 height, just to make it quick. And just reduce that aspect ratio there. So it's framing the character a bit better. That foot's still not right, let me sort that foot out. Right, okay, so we can either render to a new window, which is what we'll do, or you can actually uh, have it go to a, directly to a file uh, if you want. There are other third-party rendering uh, tools like RenderQ, for instance, uh, Man Fridays, which is what I use uh, a lot if I want to stack them up. But again, that's something for a future video. Right, so let's just get this going. Uh, we've got all sorts of render settings here and tone mapping and so on, which we won't cover here, but let's just kick this render off now. So it opens up a render window. And move that progress pop up over. So we can see here the progress. Uh, so this is a relatively simple scene. So it's, it's marching through the, uh, the render pretty quickly there.
and there we have it so we can save that file um, so we can save that to that directory there and here's a final look all right so that's it for this introduction so i hope it's been useful in the next video i'll dive more into das characters the people that will be the focal point in your scene and how to pose them to bring them fully to life as well as modifying them to create the unique look that you desire if you enjoyed this video or found it useful then please like and subscribe and leave a comment you can also learn more about my art by following me at Generation3DX on DeviantArt. I'll see you in the next video.